discuss any outstanding projects, any votes needed to return funds or to extend the time needed by. So let me pull this back up. Um, okay. um, here's the outstanding projects. We've got the town hall, hall pillars are done. They just, because the town hasn't closed out June 30th yet, some of these bills have actually been paid, but we don't have the, the figures yet. So hopefully we'll get them. I'm, I'm sure we'll get them before our next meeting in February. Um, but we have the Goodwin repairs. Um, the original was 226,000. We still have a 201,957 available. And the same for the elevator study, never got anything dipped. And the, the 25,000 or so pretty much was all paid to the architect for the initial work and then questions and it um it, it, there's still that much left. And then the clock restoration um, isn't due until 26 because that was already extended. The Hockenham fence has two components, the 2400 here and then another um, 25,000 and they both were to be done by this fall. So that one does need to be extended. Um, I talked to Carolyn about that, and she mentioned it a little bit last meeting, that the two attorneys have been talking, and, and they were to come up with an agreement, and everything just seems to take a while. So um, I would I would ask that we, you know, we consider extending that, because it is mostly done. It's just finishing up some parts that weren't done according to the way the town wanted them and then finishing the project itself. Um, but the funds are there. It's just getting getting the agreement worked out. Um, the town hall pillars again are done and I think that may have already been paid. If not, it's in progress. The, the steeple is again, has some time and I know they're working on, I, I don't know much of an update on that other than we certainly are trying to come up with a solution. Um, the Hopkins fields we talked about, they'll be paid off in October. Um, and they're, they're still working on some things. It's, there's still some areas that aren't quite, quite finished with some drainage and green grass and <laughs> grass period um, that they're working on. So, um, but they, you know, last week they, or last meeting, they said they do expect to pay, to be using up all the funds that were allotted. Um, the Stamplers are done and they're at the Historical Society. And I believe that that bill has been submitted if not already paid. Um, so that's all set. And then the signs and the tours, um, the signs are done. And so there's been, the bill was submitted for that. They still are working on updating the walking tours in the final stages. And then they have um, the audio tour to, to work on as well. Um, the Russell School Study is, Jennifer mentioned the, the company she had gotten the estimated for the need study is, is actively doing that as well. That's no, that's the town hall study. The Russell School Study, it sounds like they've gotten some information on that, but I, I haven't heard or seen anything um, forward on that. But that's not up until May, until the annual meeting next year. So um, the only ones that we need to work on is the Goodwin and then the, the Hockenham fence. The Goodwin has expired. No one's saying let's continue this open. Um, we've redone the 80,000 for the needs there. So that one's a pretty easy um, vote. Does anyone want to make a motion to claw back the 201,957.70 and the 25,000 that were allotted for the, that were put aside for the, um, the Goodwin repairs in the phase. Andy? I'll move. Second. That was Ray? Yep. Yep. And that'll be the, the 25,000 for the elevator actually came out of historic resources. 
the um, 201957 is under the is out of the undesignated. So Adam, that'll need to get added back into those. Um, okay. Good. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Um, Kayla. Uh, roll call vote. Mary. Yes. Risa. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Andy Morris Friedman. Yes. Adam. Um, yes. Uh, Ray. Yep. Diane. Yes. Andy Klopaki. Yes. Great. Vote is unanimous. Would anyone like to make a motion to extend the Hawkeye and Fence for two years, three years, hopefully two years? <laughs> Is this is this both projects? Are we doing one vote for both, or we couldn't do one vote for each? I th I think we can combine them unless <clears> okay. wants to look at them separately. All right. Well, I'll move that we uh, combine them and that we vote to extend. Second from anyone. Second. That was Sherry. Okay. Um. Any other discussion? What are we extending till? Um, I would I would do recommend the two years. I, one year just seems to it's it's hard to get back in front of town meeting a year later and say it just didn't get done. And everything takes so long now. I mean, everything just takes so. Well, long. we also don't have a town administrator. Some we do have a town administrator, but we you know this is not a priority to help hammer this out, I would imagine, for a little bit. So that's another reason to give it two years. However. Yeah, I think I, I saw somebody down there the other day. Was, um, oh, good. It looked like, and honestly, when I, I drove back through, the bottoms of the posts looked like they had dirt on them. So um, they weren't all level, but I thought I saw a couple of people down there um, as I drove by and Oh, good. And uh, and then uh, when I came back later, or uh, a couple of days later, rather, I noticed that there was parking on the bottom of the pole. So actually well, that's like encouraging. There was... And they're to put a chain, single chain between them all. Um, right. That hasn't been done yet either. Um, yeah. What What's the? I, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to drag this out, but what's What's the problem here? I mean, it's just. So, I. Here, well, I'll keep this. <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> no, no, it's it's you know there was a job to be done, and there was expectations of the job to be done, and it wasn't done exactly. You know, so it was a contractor or with the contractor, yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Um, so, but they okay. they felt differently than the town did in terms of what they did versus what was expected, and it ended up with their lawyer talking to the town's lawyer. Um, oh to to figure out who's paying for you know what what was a what was a you know job change and what was already covered in the original contract is I think where the issues were. Okay. Okay. So and you know what happens when two lawyers start talking to each other. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so how long are you gonna how long are we gonna extend this? <laughs> years? I think let's try the two years. And um, two years. So, all right. Any other discussion? Um, Kayla, can all those in favor? Roll call vote. Mary? Yes. Risa? Uh, yes. Sharon? Sharon? Yes. Andy Morris Friedman? Yes. Adam? Yes. Ray? Yes. Diane? Yes. Andy Klopaki. Yes. So unanimous. Um, very good. So that takes care. And I just want to show up at the top here. Um, Adam, do you want to do this part? Taking us from what you brought us at the beginning of the meeting to where we are now? Sure. Um, yeah, I can. I can do my best. Um, so, okay. So, um, row, okay. So row six, 
column G, that's our open space reserve that's remaining unchanged uh, at 79,300. Um, for the historic reserve, um, we're adding the claw back for the Goodwin. So that's the 65, sorry, uh, 6,550 plus the 25,000 for our new total of 31,550. Um, for the housing reserve, there's no changes there. So we're carrying forward that 308,339. Um, we are going to, we will combine rows nine and 10, the CPC reserve and the undesignated fund balance. Um, so the new uh, total, will, thank you, thank you, Mary, will be the sum of those, which would be the um, 1,281,000. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Uh, I'm changing it on you. Sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure I'm <laughs> I'm I'm myself following. It would be the undesignated will go to a million five forty two by combining those two. Okay. The subtotal is still the same. This and the total is always the same. Yes. Um, yeah. And then here's the new projects we just voted on tonight. Mm -hmm. So that's where we got, um, there's the 79,300 and the 261,150. Um, no, it's not quite. Yeah, it was, that's what I, that's what I was Sorry. confused about looking at. Here's the at. new ones. The... Yeah. 79,300 and 210,700 for the 290 for the port in place. Mm -hmm. 2,000 for the um, historical commission. And then the 80,000 is the 29,550 and the 50,450. So they get there. We're using, again, not community housing this time, but we're using the other, the other ones. Um, so that brings us up here. So we're going to be down to zero out of open space, zero out of historic. And then we'll have still a million 781. Um, in the undesignated fund, partly because we just added 200,000 and took out 261. So we still have a really healthy um, amount in there. And this this one here jumped from the 762 um, because we put the 750, 750,000 that will be paid out in October got moved down to reserve for expenditures. Yeah, Mary, am I right. misreading this? I no, something's wrong. This I was going to say, shouldn't that be around one million five and not, uh, yeah. not one million seven? I, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Million two. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Because the the total has to always agree. Yeah. Now we split it up. It's still there's only so much in the fund, so we. Yeah. And the CPA fund is the three million one twenty two. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, thank you. So there we are. That's where we're at. I think we're in we're in good shape. And hopefully we should have by now um we have another quarter of the state of the town surcharge was paid August 1st. So as soon as we get the updated figures, this will you know be um a bit higher. So that's that's good too, about 70,000 or so. Um I Two questions. Yes. Um, next town meeting, we'll vote to restock the set asides, the ten percent set asides. We do those only at the annual town meeting. Okay. All right. So not this time. Next time. Right. And then, didn't we vote to use some of the housing money for a um, for a, a fund? Yeah. There's a housing trust. Had right. the housing trust, and a hundred thousand went into that. Um, and the idea being if they found a property or something that they wanted to act on quickly, it wouldn't need to go before us and town meeting because it could only be voted on twice a year. So they, they'd they be able to move faster if they needed to put a down payment on a property or do something like that. They haven't, as far as I know, they haven't used any of those funds yet. Right. Did um, that have a clawback provision? No. Okay. No, no, it doesn't. But they can only use them for projects that well that that hundred thousand they can only use for projects that would be approved under the CPA rules. 
Um, so it, it can't be used just for anything. And it, it, you know, if they have other funds that can be used for other projects, but anything that they use that 100,000 for that came from CPA needs to be able to follow what would be approved under CPA. Maybe it would help motivate them to use it if they thought we were going to ask for it back. I don't believe that it's set up through the state. I don't believe I'll, I'll look back on the warrant, but I, I think it was like here, you're now in charge of this. Okay. Um, and a lot of, a lot of cities, especially, you know, big ones that have millions of dollars in that housing portion. I mean, they're, the CPA is pretty separate from all the housing stuff. This housing trust really handles any of the housing projects. Um, so I think it's set up as basically a separate, you know, committee or authority, um, and they have they have charge of those funds. But I'll double check, Andy. Okay. We don't even have it on, you know, we don't even have it under our expenditures. It's not considered part of the CPA fund anymore. Okay. Yeah. Did Did you say two questions, or was that? I think I did. Yes, definitely did both questions. Okay, good. Um, any other comments on the funds or anything? All right. Um, changes to the town CPA bylaws. There's a bylaw committee right now. Kayla's on it, and um, is, some other people are on it that um, are working on what we should do. And so took a look at just our section of the town bylaws that has to do with CPA. Um, let's see where I have it. And there, there wasn't many changes. Um, let's see, it's not there. And we have to. Here it is. This is it. Um, oh, I know what I need. I need the Google link. So a lot of a lot of the changes had to do with when it was originally set up. I guess they thought people should just be on it for a year and then be on it for three years. So it was set up for initial one year term and then three years. And at least in the last five years, anybody new has been three years. So that was a change suggested was to make it. Um, Mary, I have it up if you want me to share my screen. All right. I think I have to. Thank you, Sherry. I think I have to make you the host for just a little bit. OK, and then you'll make me a host back. Yep. You promise? You can also make them a co-host and then you're both. OK, well, I made her the host. <laughs> It's a good sign of leadership that you can give up control. <laughs> well, I don't know what you can see on my screen. Well, we, we can we can see we can see more than just that, but we can see it. Yeah. Well, I can so, close um, this. Great. I don't need that. Okay. Um. So. At the very beginning, here it is, park and rec for three term, three years, planning board, three years, no longer long range planning. So that that got moved down to the, under the select board um, and the finance committee for three years and then three members to be appointed by the select board for a term of three years. It's interesting in the state bylaws, you have to, there's a nine person committee max and only five are designated. You can have up to four members by the select board. Had we chose to, not do that. They had one member of the finance committee also, um, and then three members by the select board, which I think makes a lot of sense, but that is one change from the state. And then um, and then this paragraph here, B, was, I think, that was one of the suggestions um, from somebody, uh, maybe Kayla. Um, if the representative from the conservation committee, parks and rec commission, finance committee, housing authority, 
or planning board resigns from the originating entity, then the originating entity is to appoint another representative to the community preservation um, to finish up the representative's term. So that's just kind of to, to clean it up a little bit. You need that in there as a catch-all anyway, because, you know, at least in the case of the Finance Committee, we reappoint on an annual basis the representation. So it's possible that, you know, may not be, even though uh, somebody could still be on the Finance Committee, they it, it could be a different member who would be attending be a representative the desire of the community. Okay. Well, I was just thinking... Go ahead. I was just thinking there might be cases where, for example, if somebody from conservation is replacing um, somebody who resigned from the CPA, then the rest of their term on conservation might only be two years rather than the full three-year term. And so should the language specify that it's for a term of three years or until the end of the their originating committee term? Is that too confusing? I, I think it is. I think, um, I, think, I think the three years works okay. And then if somebody resigns from their committee, then they resign from this, I think is. And then whoever gets reappointed finishes out the three years as opposed to starting with new three. Right. right. Okay. And I mean, part of it is you want to have certain amount up each year, you know, not everybody up the same year. So if you keep it on a three year thing, then then it it's easier to do that. Who is going to say? Yeah, I mean, the, the the reality is that the, the three years really applies to the at large folks. And, you know, and then again, the committees could. That can change depending upon the rules of the committee. But I, if you want to leave it as three years, I'm fine with that. Or you want to leave it as. Um, you know, it's a committee designation. I think um, from my point of view, in reality, three years seems, people seem to stay on this committee and the three years go by. And it's nice just once every three years to have to say, can you give me an official notice that you're the representative as opposed to having to do it every year? Um, I think that's that's one reason I like the three years. Plus, it really is nice if somebody is on here for at least three years and for their original committee, because it takes a while to get used to to everything and what we're doing. And so it's nice to have them stay on. Um, but this was a good idea, Kayla. I think it it that paragraph in there does just sort of help fill the gap if, you know, you can't be on the CPA if you're no longer on the originating committee. Um, I don't think I wrote that paragraph, but I had the the question. Right. No, I okay. Um all right. Can you move this down, Sherry, a little for the, the next section? Sure. Yep. Um it's the right space. Yeah, that's great. And then adding in here that the CPA can also include consideration of regional projects for community preservation. Um, Is that coming from the state bylaw? No, I think Andy thought that was... <laughs> Andy, is that okay. something you it, added? The, the state bylaw does allow right. uh, does. cooperation between CPA committees and regional projects. And it's interesting, the creation and preservation of land for recreation and use or improvements of such sites if purchased with CPA funds. Hadley tends to stretch that a little bit, doesn't require, like, really, even the housing is supposed to be, like, Golden Court should only have been, CPA funds should only have been used there if Golden Court was created with CPA funds. Well, it was created long before CPA funds were available, so we... The town has a history of, you know, doing projects there. So, um, but that's that's off the state. Um, and then the state is, states, this was done in 2004 when the CPA committee was um, 
was voted on and approved, or the CPA Act was voted on and approved. And then it was updated a little bit here and there, but the state hasn't updated their bylaws. So we compared ours to the state and filled in some of the language they had added to theirs so that we, you know, we agree. Um, the state actually has a lot more. They have a lot about bonding. They have a lot about, and obviously we have to follow the state, but it's nice to have um, the information in the town for for um, what was already in there. We mostly just compared it and added where, where it was missing some of the newer language. Um, so the, they don't want projects used, the CPA funds can't be used for maintenance. And then... Um, they, they have a big thing of no artificial turf that was voted on and made part of the CPA Act. So we put that in there as well. Um, are you... Mary, there's a comma missing after however. Thank you. Can you stick it in? Thank you. Okay. If you want to continue on down the to the next section, nothing changed there. Um, good, that'll finish us. Um, once town meeting, but this is again, I don't, this is, Andy, I think you you had added this maybe, which I think is a good idea. Um, once town meeting votes to move money into the, I, you might wanna pay, call it the CPA expense fund or CPA administration expense fund um, spending from the admin fund is at the discretion of the committee um, I think that's sort of understood but it doesn't hurt to spell it out you know the the 2000 or 5000 I think we have five you know we have we've did it in two sections one for payroll for Kayla and then one for um, the CPA expense fund and and that was um, 5,000. So that is for, we don't have to go back to town hall to um, do that. Um, and then should that sentence be moved to section two? Which one? Once town meeting votes to move money into the admin fund. Yeah, and it is a little, it is a little bit. Because it really is about section two. Well, that is section two, but it, it's. I mean, well, number two, I mean. Oh, oh okay. Um, oh, yes, yes. Yes, that makes sense to put it right there. Okay, that, that then that makes sense. You don't have to spell out more what the admin fund is. Um, Sherry. <laughs> So it, you, you, it's not a new to, it's part, it's going to be part of the present to. The next, sen Correct. The next sentence. Oh, well, maybe at the end of the paragraph. Yeah, at the end? All right. right. After fund? Yes. Right here. Yeah. Stick it in. I'll cut it. All right. Yeah, I'll take it out. Um, I see the space there. Okay. And then the, that next part, I meant to be a comment and not an right, addition. Right, that's fine. Um, the blue. Yeah. I don't, the, because of the wording now in the warrant, it says it's automatically to be returned. I don't think we need to have it in here. Okay, let's take it out. And I think, you know, that could change if for some reason the warrant changed, but... Um, and then the extensions, my understanding is yes, town meeting funds can't be spent without town meeting approval. So if the funds, we, we put in that two or three year ending date. So when that ends, we do need town meeting approval. We can't just extend it. Okay. Um, and the nice thing is, so if you can cross out the next green section too, Sherry. Um, the nice thing is when we do extensions at the annual meeting, they're part of the, um, What's it called? The vote where all this stuff happens at once? The consent agenda. Yeah, the consent agenda. So they're part of the consent agenda. So it's, you know, it isn't taking extra time potentially out of town meeting unless people have questions about it. Whereas in the fall, it's its own warrant. Um, 
So his own war article. So it's, you know, again, it takes a little more time, but, um, and hopefully somebody will be there that can address the Hawkeye fence. Um, so the, the next question, Andy, you had made some comments on as well. And um, I do believe you need five of the nine, even if only seven are present. Does somebody know better about how a quorum works? Is it is it of the committee members or is it of who actually appears for the meeting? Because if only three people show up, you'd have two people being the quorum, which... Right. It's different. It's a, a simple yeah. quorum is a simple majority of the committee members. Yeah. yeah. Of the, the full committee, so the nine, even if there's seven at the meeting? That's correct. Five. Yeah. So it would be five. Um. And then it's passed by a majority of the members present. So three, if there's five members present, then it's three people voting yes makes it pass. No, no, you need five saying yes. Um, well, I'm not sure. He says of those present, but. Well, he added that. Yes. Present. Well, we should just decide which one it is. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure it's for us to decide. I I, I think there's probably... I, I th I, it's usually when you have a quorum, it's a majority of those present passes the motion. But maybe we should ask Stuart what the, what the law says. I think we should ask more through the town attorney. Um, okay. Well, I think this is if this might be simple Robert's rules and probably I just so. go to uh, Jennifer and get an answer there. Although it seems that as for yeah, if if it would only take three people to to uh, vote yes or approve something, that's and there was nine people. That means six people had no say, and I think the floor of town meeting would have an objection to that. Well, that's that's when uh, you know the 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 tally vote tally is usually present on the warrant article, and it would it, that would be reflected in that. There might be some explaining to do. Yeah. Um, if there was a vote done on them. See, I, my feeling, well, that's interesting. So, all right. I, so I make sure that we have at least five people present before we do our meeting, but because we need a quorum to have the meeting. But then the question is, if you have five people here, that's a quorum. Is it a majority vote of those five or do we need at least five to say yes? Um, because five is a majority vote of the nine. So um, Kayla's on the bylaw committee. Kayla, that's something to follow up on because um, it may be a quorum is needed to even have the meeting, but then once you have however many you have, five or six or seven, how many of those have to vote yes to be, to have it a majority vote? Um, yeah, I believe it's that you need to have a quorum of people voting for a motion to pass, but I can double check. All right, well, that's that's a good. So maybe, um, so, so there's still that of those present. So that's, you know, and then the amendments and then. Um, well, we'll just find out yeah. what the rule is and then whatever it is, put it in. Well, I think. And, and I mean, if it's got, if it's gotta be, if it's got to be five yes votes, regardless of the number of participants at the meeting, then you'll just write that in. And, you know, all we're doing is saying we've looked at it. Here's our recommendations for the changes that are to be made. I think it's up to the bylaw committee to actually say what they feel the changes should be. And we're giving them feedback for the CPA section. Um, well, uh, you know, I'm on several committees. And some committees go one way and some committees go the other way. Okay. So, uh, you know, if we have an opinion of how we want to do it, then yeah. I think we should we should say it. If, if people want five minimum votes for a yes, then that's what we should do. If, some, if people just want a majority of those present, then that's what we should do. Historically, this has been a wonderful committee. We usually have eight or nine, 
of the nine members, um, especially since we have someone now on housing authority. <laughs> used to be seven of the eight members. Now it's, you know, eight or nine of, so we we do tend to get um, a, much more than the majority, which is wonderful. But there might be a time when, you know, we got, a, we got five members and we want to be able to vote. You wouldn't want to have to get all five to say yes to have something passed perhaps, but um, well, so I, I don't I, know. I don't know the answer, but. Um, I just want it to be clear. That's yeah, all. I think that that's a good point, so. Okay, well, here we here you go. We we've got um, any other comments on this before we say here here you go, Kayla. No, this is great. I'll bring it to the bylaw committee um, and I'll double check with Jennifer about the quorum issue. It's probably something that affects all the committees. So um, right, it'd be nice to have it consistent. Certainly a town meeting, you need a quorum to start and then it's majority of the people there that, um, you know, if it's a simple majority vote, you don't need, if a quorum's 100, you don't need 100 to say yes, you just need at least 51. So that may be the precedent, right. but um, good. Um, Andy, any coalition, coalition, coalition updates? Uh, well, I missed the last meeting. Um, which was last week. Um, but there were several changes to the uh, CPA bylaw that were proposed by the coalition and they were all rejected by the assembly. Um, so we don't have to worry about any of that. Um, uh, and they're, they're hiring a lobbyist okay. because uh, it didn't work so well without one. And then they've, they also have budgeted uh, three people working in the office and they are trying to decide whether they want to stick with two people doing three jobs or hire the third person. So, and there's a, and then finally there's a big push to get towns to spend their, um, their housing money. But Hadley's not the only town that's having trouble spending that money. Well, uh, the, that the, can the, change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. There was a home rule petition oh no i'm forgetting the town um which was upheld by the court which could throw the whole cpa rules um up in the air where they wanted to spend money on something that's not approved and they did a home rule petition and it was uh upheld by the town so if that happens then it's the wild west in terms of the cpa rules but let's not worry about it until it happens. Should I stop sharing, Mary? Yes, thank you. That's great. I know, I checked to see. <laughs> and you can make me host again, if you would. All right, please. no, I need to know how to do that. So Unless next to um, over, hit participants. So you see the list of participants? Mm -hmm. um, down at the very bottom of the screen, if you're on a computer where it says participants, chat, Click on participants. So you see the list of participants. I do. And then when you look at my name over on the right, there are three little dots. If you click on my name, there are three little dots. You're done. Okay, thank you. Um, ideas for CPA projects. Handy, you're on. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things about a CPA is that it doesn't say how the money gets distributed. And in Hadley, we kind of did the people come to us with their proposal and we, uh, you know, recommend it or not. But ideas for CPA projects can come from the committee itself. Um, so if you have a great idea for a CPA project, don't think, oh, I can't present it because I'm on the committee. Um, you can present it yourself. You can get people to, um, you know, uh, uh, present it for you. Um, and I just want to encourage members to take a more active role in getting this money uh, out into the community. So I thought I'd ask, uh, does anybody have an idea for a CPA project that uh, they want to bring before us? Risa. Uh, the Housing Authority will be submitting an, an application for February 1st 
and that will be the door project. I've mentioned that before, the front and back exterior doors and storms. Um, so. At Golden Court, yeah. At Golden Court, yeah. Someday, there are wonderful records at the First Congregational Church, which was the town meeting house, um, and a lot of baptism, a lot of town records, uh, well, early. From seven, in 1766, there was a fire in, at the parsonage, and a lot of town records were lost, church records were lost. Um, but there's a lot of early ones that could be could be not digitized because that wouldn't be CPA, but could be cataloged and made easier to find when people had questions. But that's um, that's it's probably not for February. Cut conservation boxes to put the records in. Um, yeah. yeah. You know all, yeah. all all kinds of stuff. And a list uh, of exactly what's there. I, and, I, yeah. I've been trying to get the farm museum to come before us uh, mm -hmm. to get some funds, and they they won't do it. It's very frustrating. Does anybody know anyone at the Farm Museum? <laughs> Gee, Sherry. <laughs> there you yeah. go, Andy. There's there's a project for you, Andy. There you go. You could you could bring one forward. You know, yeah. you could uh you could you could hire a part-time archivist to work at the museum for eight months, you know, to do all the things you've ever wanted to do. We have hired archivists in the past. We do have some archival records, um, but last time was probably 15 years ago um but yes so much could be done there um i yeah, have kind of stepped step back i was treasurer for 40 years and i stepped back because nothing's getting done <laughs> it's like so frustrating but i'm still on the board so all right well i have been speaking to people there to try to get them yeah. you know and uh, they said uh oh we need to discuss it amongst ourselves first and i said no <laughs> don't do it discuss it with me first and then present it to your board so i really want to i really want to encourage people to get out there to plug the cpa and uh to beat the bushes to come up with some ideas so really? many of those precious things are not secure in any way shape or form either right um right, right. even even new labels you know yeah. i mean i know those handwritten labels are very quaint but um you know any of that kind of stuff um, so please be a little, be a little, I know all of you, most of you are on other committees already, but try to be a little more active and, uh, and, and sell the program, you know, cause the needs, the needs are out there and we have the funds to meet the needs. So plug one the thing, CPA. One thing I've wanted, into, oh, oops, sorry. I'm sorry. Put a plug into Tom Wiskevich. He's the new treasurer and he likes to do things at the farm museum. Okay. Adam? One thing I've wondered, I don't know if this would be an acceptable use of CPA funds um, or if it's even possible given that I don't really know how jurisdiction works with the um, the Norwatuck bike path. But one thing I, I've often wondered is if it would be possible to put in water fountains, like especially um, uh, there's a few places where there's lots of people who park and it just seems like it would be, I don't know, I, I'm not, I guess I'm not sure how expensive it would be, but it doesn't seem like it would be a lot of money and it seems like it would be useful to a lot of people who use the bike path. There's a, um, I think it's a Hyundai car dealership. They've put in a water fountain and, and uh, air uh, for, for bike tires out on the bike path. And I, I use the bike path frequently and I've, I've noticed that and I've thought, huh, I wonder if that's something we could, we could do, but I don't actually know if that would be something we, we could do with CPA funds. Well, I was well, on there. the I was on the Nordic Rail Trail Citizens Advisory Committee for like fourteen years, so I'd love to talk to you about that. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to, Andy. There is an his uh, an historic fountain on um, the town common, not far from the bike trail, that is not functioning. Right. Oh. And the select board has been discussing that. Um, whether or not to get it functioning again. That would be really nice. That would be a cool project. Lots of good ideas. We just need, we need people to 
do the work to put it in put in the application. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'll connect with Andy, I'll connect with Andy and talk more about it because I I've, I've been bouncing that idea around for a while and I'm also interested in the historic water fountain that you mentioned, Sharon. Well, it's, it's a water fountain, so it's been that was disengaged. I think I want to say in the '60s or something. So it's an old water fountain. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's not. Is is it a fountain as opposed? It's a to fountain. A fountain. Now, I know the one you're talking about, right? It's a drink. A, it's a drinking fountain. Oh, it is. Okay. Oh, it is. It's a drinking fountain. Yes. Oh. I thought uh, yeah. maybe I'm thinking of something else. Okay. Neat. The one on the Neat. front lawn, the, one with the WCTU fountain on the front lawn of town hall. That was a drinking fountain too. Hmm. All right, there's some ideas. Yeah, yeah. when the CPA committee was first proposed, people said, uh, there's going to be a stampede of people coming to your committee to get all this money. And the, you know, the stampede never happened. Um, and then we got the reputation of that we say no to everybody, even though we've done like 150 projects, you know, over the years. So um, let's get out there and use that money. Thank you, Andy. I'm going to skip ahead to 10 and 11 because it's getting later and I want to, we may push those other two off till, till February. Um, town meeting information that we have this wonderful brochure um, that Kayla did such a good job with putting together. Um, and we passed it out at town meeting, though I, I'm not sure how many people actually took it. But um, I did put some, I'm trying to hold it up here. Sorry, I'll put it by me, did not work. Um, there we go, except it's backwards. But anyways, um, I put some in the CPA box at town hall. So if you were didn't get one at town meeting last May, you can pick one up there if you'd like it. It's got great information. I don't think we need to maybe, I guess my question is, what do we present at town meeting? Um, I'm not sure we need to do a brochure every, you know, for the special town meeting, maybe every year for the annual update what we've got. Um, you know, I can do a quick intro to what the balances are um, before, you know, before we, I think it's nice for people to know what the balances are before we're voting on projects so they, they know. Um, that there's funds there to do it. But um, I wasn't sure about how often to do the brochure, I guess, is is my question. Um, I would consider the annual town meeting. Do you think the brochure was effective? I mean, a lot, you know, people that were interested took it, people that weren't, didn't. I, I you know, we made a lot, it's Kayla, there, um, there was a bit extra, but. Um, well, you can, you can fine tune the quantity that we, we yeah. Yeah, I think 50 would be plenty. Also, they can be black and white and not color. I don't see what they want. Can we use the printer at Town Hall? Yeah. Sorry. There it is. Yeah, I like the flyer. I thought it was very clear and you did a good job. And... Ton of information we came up with. Yeah. And it made it very easy to see it all. So. Um, all right, well, we'll, we'll do that for in the spring. And I can just sort of quick go over what, you know, what's available. Yeah, um, I, I think in terms of your little presentation before the, the discussion of the articles, um, you know, the number of articles being presented, uh, mm -hmm. the total amount of money being requested, the amount of money in the funds, and then maybe the state match and the town contribution for that year, just so people realize that there is a state match because a lot of people don't know that. And I think that's plenty. We may even, if it's in November, we may even have our state match for the year, this yeah. year. But we certainly have last year's figures. Good. Um, which, will, which will not be overwhelming, the state match this year. Yeah. Next meeting dates. So President's Day is February 17th, and we certainly stay away from school vacation week. Um, what do you think about 
pretty much mimicking what we did last year, which was applications due February 1st, and then have our first meeting on Monday, February 10th, and then our second one on March 3rd. February 1st is a Saturday. February 10th. But well, that's when the applications are due. Okay. So it's yeah. Okay. That's not a meeting date. It's um okay, those dates work for me. So is that fine for everybody? It's nice to have Could it. Could you just repeat them? Yes. February 1 for applications due. Um February 10 for the first meeting. And then Monday, March 3rd for the second meeting. So it gives a couple of weeks to between for questions and getting, you know, both us and the applicants to get more information if needed. I think that works really well, the time in between. Yeah, those dates work for me. Okay, good. They're fine for me. Good. Yep, sounds good. All right. We'll do that. Um Kayla, just the previous records update, and that'll be nice and quick. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, I've been going through some digital and paper files that are coming from various places and trying to organize them by projects. Um, so I have a spreadsheet. I don't know if I need to share it right now, just documenting um, when it was voted, the project, the amount, and if a digital or paper file has been located. There's I'm most of the way done. Um, there's still a few kind of random papers that I'm sorting through trying to figure out which project they belong to. Um, but if you have any CPA applications or documents on your computer or in your house, um, if you could send them my way, that would really help. There's a few like the there's a few questions I have about how you want to organize those files. Um, I, there are some projects where there's several applications for where like the, the Hockenheim Fence or like any of the cemeteries, um, would it be best to organize those by each individual application or kind of like a category, even like the Hopkins fields, like there were several applications for that project and several phases of that. Um, for now, I've been organizing it by the town meeting vote, but if you think it would be easier for somebody in the future to find stuff if I categorize it by type of project. Um, that's another option. And then I I don't think we need paper and digital copies of applications. There's not much overlap right now. Um, but I wanted to ask if you wanted to keep paper files if there are digital files of applications. I'm seeing head shaking. Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't think we need both. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Kayla, thank you so much. This is this is huge. Edwin brought boxes over and he had gotten them from years of other people's and and um but I I probably want to say if they're applications from the last four years, you probably don't need those, correct? You're you're talking about earlier ones, right? That I, I think what might be helpful is when you get to a point where you know what you're missing, like what projects are missing, we can put out a, a, a list. You can put out a list and then we'll try to see if anyone has those particular projects. Um, Cause I'm sure Andy has a lot of back ones that you may already have and other people may as well. Um, yeah, well, that sounds good. Also, also there's state records. There's the, what is it called? Right. The CP3 forms. Right. But they don't have copies of the applications. No, no, but that, that at least as a record of which projects passed. Well, I, I think keeping them in order by um, town meeting is helpful because we've got the schedule of what was passed each town meeting. So then being able to go to that town meeting and there's the projects, even if it means you have to go to several town meetings for like the, the Zaturka Field or the Hopkins Field or Goodwin. Um, at least you know where to look. So yeah. I think I think by date is a safe way to, to do it. Yeah. Um, One other thing I've noticed is that there's a lot of um, files that aren't, that don't have an application. They don't have the original application, but they have like maybe supplemental materials or invoices that were paid. Okay. Um, and I don't know how much of that you want to keep. I'm keeping all the original. I mean, I, I haven't really tossed anything unless there's duplicates so far. Um, but do you want 
the copies of like the town clerk um like certifying the vote or like invoices that were paid for projects and different there's kind of like correspondence and I, I don't know how much of that is really helpful at this point um especially for the projects that are completed and closed out but if we need to keep it there's also like the records retention schedule that we should probably consult um but I, I don't know how much how much we want to keep and how much is just taking up space it doesn't take up much digital space but it is time to make it digital so um, right I have a hard time throwing that stuff out but <laughs> So maybe maybe checking with the the town, you know, how they suggest doing some of that stuff. And Kayla's also getting agendas and minutes for all the trying to get agendas and minutes through the years as well, um, which is maybe harder to tell if there's been more minutes or meetings or not. But um, that's helpful also. I think some of the some of the documentation attachments we get with the applications really explain what the heck the project's about. Um, mm -hmm. And especially the earlier applications basically were just, here's the title, here's who want, who's doing it, and here's the money. There wasn't, you know, we're asking for much more descriptions now. So I think some of that is important because otherwise it's hard to tell what, what was done or what was proposed, but um, I'm not sure we need to see every bill. Okay, yeah. This is definitely your call, Mary, but I think that if the information is available other places in town, you know, if the mm -hmm. town keeps records of the invoices, then we don't need to keep them, mm -hmm. as long as it's available somewhere. Okay. That's yeah, cool. that makes sense. Good. Well, thank you so much. That's that's sort of been in the background, like it should be done sometime. So it's great to even just know there's a place where these records are is, is wonderful. Um, yeah, and I'll send out the spreadsheet of the missing um, applications and files once I get that done. And then we'll send them to Amy Fiden and to some others yeah. that um, might be able to come up with what we're missing. So um, the last thing, and then we'll end just to the CPA plan. So apparently part of the CPA Act is you have to develop a plan and new cities and towns, that's their big first project is putting together this plan. Well, Hadley was one of the first towns that adopted CPA. So it wasn't, it was, it wasn't actually done. Andy got it going in 2018. Um, and the $10,000 was paid to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to, to come up with a CPA plan. But nobody seems, including the PV uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, to be able to come up with the final version, which would be outdated by now in some regards, anyways. But um, we do have a draft, and you know, with a lot of notes on it, and um, it'd be great to, you know, it, it's it's something. It's part of what some of our responsibility is to keep that updated every few years. So it'd be good to take a look at it. And I was wondering if anyone would like to try to, you know, some of it is just facts and figures, which um, our, our FAQ section is actually already outdated with a few things. So um, we'll work on bringing that up to date, you know, probably yearly, but um, would anyone be interested in taking a deeper dive into the community? Um, the CPA plan that the draft that's there and trying to not necessarily bring it up to date, but at least look at where we should be, what the next step should be to, to try to bring it up to date. I'd be happy to work with somebody on it. Okay. Is it a Google Doc? At this point, it's... it's no, um, it's, it's, it's a, a scan paper. of a paper copy. So, but the PVPC is trying to come up with the the person that did it retired soon after, so they're trying to find the records of it. And the and the committee didn't really care for it all that much. It was a little critical of how Hadley manages things, and Andy, you remember. Um, and so, we just. We, we said we were going to rewrite it and we never did. And then we finally did pass it 
just because I said we paid for this thing, let's just pass it. Um, but we never really used it in the way that it was supposed to be used. So, it, I think it wanted, you know, applications due November 1st for the annual town meeting once a year, which is what a lot of towns do. You know, right. some of the timing was totally different from what we do. Um, and the, the Pioneer Vet Plan, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, who I'm a big fan of, really did not do the greatest job. They just took plans from other towns and stuck Hadley's name on it, on the cover. And sometimes they didn't even change the name of the town in the report. <laughs> um, so, so they weren't happy with us and we weren't happy with them. And so it was just dropped like a hot potato and we never really did anything with it. And then we <laughs> lost it. <laughs> so, well, there's certainly the quite a few towns that have recently joined the CPA program that voted to adopt the CPA and they may have current plans that might be getting a copy of those might be really helpful just to see what where current version is and also some of the state facts and figures would be can't helpful. Um, does anyone want to work with Andy or or you know everyone's pretty busy with what they're working with already but um, I have no excuse for declining. So, Andy, if. All right. All right. <laughs> I'll call you. Yay. All right. Anything else? Um, I, I think the FAQs between Kayla and I, we can just, it's pretty much just updating the state data and the town data for how many projects and what the dollar amount is. It's not really anything of substance. It's more just making it current. So we can just work on that once a year and, and um, put it on, you know, update the website, but um, good. Anything else? Well, thank you all. We got through what we needed to and um, sure appreciate everyone's wonderful participation and we'll see you all at hopefully a town meeting and we'll see how all our recommendations go. So thank you. And, and, and under three hours, go Mary. <laughs> Mary, I'm going to be share that do the document with you that we edited just to make sure that you get the edited version of it. And if you can do it with Kayla as well, she's the one okay. that's going to um, so yeah, take it on. Know. Yeah. But thank you. I can share it with anyone with a link. Can I? If you reply all to the CPA, the email that I just sent out before okay. the meeting, you could do that. All right, I won't close it till I figure out how to do that. <laughs> but I think when you make a change on the Google Doc, if that's what you did. Yeah, I think it's already shared and we have access to view the changes already. All right, good. You don't have to good. do anything, Sherry. <laughs> and maybe we should just send a draft old CPA plan to everyone. I did. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just so you can read it in your free time. It's it's very long. When you're it's tired, extreme. you need to go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, or you can just or you can just wait for the movie. <laughs> That's why I said just take a glance. I wasn't saying please read this. <laughs> I was going to print it. I think it's forty four pages long. It is. <laughs> the cliff notes. Wait for the cliff. Forty four pages, ten thousand dollars, and we didn't use it. So let's try to make something a little a little more relevant. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Have a good good fall, everyone. Good work, everyone. Thank Thanks you very much. Do we Thanks vote to adjourn? Night. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we vote to adjourn. Does anyone want to make a motion to So vote? moved. Second. Sec third. All in favor. <laughs> Aye. Bye. <laughs>